Welcome back for uh, another talk. Um, we have the pleasure of having Nana Ukrainian talk to us about uh, correspondence coloring of random draft. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for the invitation to be at this wonderful workshop. Um, I learned a lot of new things. <laughs> during this workshop, so uh, it's great. Uh, this is joint work with Zdenek, uh, who is at Charles University. And uh, the talk uh, is on correspondence coloring, which also is called DP coloring in some papers. So you might see this and it opens as Tvozhak Postal, but Zdenek doesn't like this name. And as, a, as his co-author, I feel obliged to use the other word. <laughs> the other name but um so this is going to be a generalization of um least coloring and uh, it's just a, a question that we tried to uh, push through and eventually we gave up and we think we don't have the right bound so i thought as a workshop it might be a good thing to present to you so you might have a better understanding how to prove the right, well, at least for us, the right conjectured bound. So let me just remind you what um, a list assignment or list coloring is. So I have graph G. Um, a list assignment is just some mapping of uh, so every vertex gets a list, uh, which is uh, some collection of uh, some subset of uh, L colors such that, and uh, so every vertex has a list of available colors. And the goal is um, color um, vertices. Um, properly, such that for every vertex, the color you assign to it is from its list. And uh, the list chromatic number is defined to be the minimum size of the lists you need to do this. So it's the minimum L um, such that if uh, every list has size um, list L, then uh, there is a, a proper, there is a coloring. There's a, I will call it L coloring. Okay. So no matter what lists you give, um, if the list have size at least L, I can always properly uh, color the vertex set. Okay, so this is the list chromatic number and clear. Um, okay, so I have to mention that this was introduced by Wiesing uh, 1976 and also independently by Erdos, Rubin and Taylor um, in 79. And I have done the mistake once of not mentioning Wiesing and <laughs> this was not appreciated by <laughs> Sasha Kostochka. So I, sh I should always remember that it's independently done um, uh, by these two groups. Uh, anyways, so clearly uh, we have that the least chromatic number is at least as large as the normal chromatic number. And actually, uh, the other direction is very false in the sense that there is actually no function such that the least chromatic number is at most uh, f of chi of g. And um, uh, an exercise is to take, for example, complete bipartite graphs. They have arbitrarily large list chromatic numbers, but their chromatic number is just two. Okay, so, um, but let's uh, look again, what, what does this list uh, coloring is actually? So it's just a assignment, right? So if I have UV and let's suppose I have the colors, uh, the list of U is, let's say one, two, three, and for V is, let's say two, three, four, then I can think about it as I'm given a matching of forbidden, uh, forbidden uh, connections, right? So I could look at U cross LU 
and v cross lv and now so this would be u1 u2 u3 uh, let's say u4 and here i have uh, v1 I have uh, V1, V2, V3, V4. Um, and what are the connections I have, right? So uh, I'm not allowed to use uh, two on both of them. So I have this matching and I have this matching and that's it, right? So this is basically telling me uh, uh, um, we are given a matching a partial matching. Uh, matching uh, between uh, ELV and uh, ULU. And it's a specific one, meaning that I have the same color uh, used. However, now uh, the, for the correspondence coloring, what you do is you say, let me just do any, any, any matching. So I, it doesn't have to uh, be between the same colors. So that's the definition of the uh, correspondence assignment, which is now a pair um, LM, where L is a list assignment. Um, G and M is a collection of matchings so M is like union of all like each uh, I have like this collection of matchings in where E is in all the edges runs over all the edges and uh, yeah so M E is some matching between ULU and VLV, where uh, is the edge UV. Okay. So instead of having this picture, now I'm allowing anything to happen. <clears throat> Now you can uh, do the rest as before, and you can define the chromatic number, the correspondence chromatic number of a graph as uh, minimum L such that uh, for any um, LM correspondence assignment, um, it's possible L color um, BG. So no matter what, how you do the matchings, as long, uh, oh, I, I need to say uh, size of the L is at least L. If the size of the list is at least L, no matter how you put these matchings, I can always color it properly such that each vertex takes, um, takes a, takes a, a, vert, a color from its least and none of this, um, none, uh, like the curse, none of the forbidden structures are there. Is that making sense? Okay. I guess I didn't really say, Oh, I didn't really say what coloring, like how I'm color, like, yeah, I understand what. I have a different question. So, mm -hmm. so just in the picture, um, mm -hmm. U4 doesn't look like it should be there if the list are all of you. Well, my list of, my list of colors are gonna be the, the union. So I'm assuming like I have the colors one, two, three, four. Ah, uh, so when you construct this hyperhead graph. Yeah. Yeah, I, I take like yeah. everything exactly. Yeah. So it's here I'm thinking of it as a partial matching, right? And then when I'm looking at the, at the, uh, like I, I mean I, I change like at this point I'm changing it. Like I'm saying maybe, uh, so in the green, 
in the green now. Let's say now I have uh, LV is uh, one, two, three, four, and LV is one, two, three, four. That making sense? And I guess I didn't really say uh, the that uh, what I want is that okay. So I guess to our color, I should say LM color, and I should say what this means. So by LM coloring, what I mean is um, first uh, every color of the vertex is in the list of that vertex. Second. Um, if uh, UV is an edge, then uh, if I look at the, if I colored U with CU and I colored V with CB, then this is not in the matching M UV. What is the role of colors here? Sounds I'm coloring the list. So, okay. so. I'm coloring. Isn't it the same if you can say all colors from every vertex? You can use, yes, you can so, use. You, you, I can say that just the U, uh, if you want, just um, UC and uh, VC. But the point is that um, you can assume that everyone has the same set of colors if you want. And you can, I can say that this, the set of colors, let's say, has size uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so, so. Does that make sense? So one, maybe an example is, uh, let's say, let's take like C2K, in particular, let's take, uh, let's take C4. So the C4, you can always uh, list, like you can color it with two colors and you can also list color it with two colors, right? I can just color, um, let's say, green and uh, let's say everyone has color. Uh, now let me show you an assignment where you can't do the same for uh, correspondence coloring. Um, so I could take, uh, let's say, U1, um, V2, um, V1, V2, and let's say X1, X2, and W1, W2. And now I, so the first few, I will just do it normally. But here I'm gonna mess things up and I'm gonna put this matching. Now you can't color this with two colors, right? Because let's say you start with this, maybe, maybe you decide that you are gonna color this with one or green. So I'm thinking of one being green and this one being uh, the other one being red. Uh, okay, that tells me that on this vertex, I have to use the second color, right? And then it also tells me that here I have to, I can't use this one, I have to use uh, the red. But now I really am stuck because I can't use red here, I have to use this, but there is this restriction. So they're different. In fact, one can show that for uh, the correspondence coloring of C2K is actually three. So it's about like, um, so this were not, um, the correspondence coloring was not introduced just for the sake of having one more type of coloring. It was introduced as a generalization. Somehow uh, it helped to uh, prove something in structural graph theory. By generalizing list coloring to the correspondence coloring, it made it easier. Um, but now uh, we don't, yeah, we don't know as much, I guess, as we wish about this coloring. So what we know is some, maybe some bounds, what, what's known. So 
uh, some uh, results on okay. So if I have maximum degree, I mean, uh, this, like if max degree is delta, um, then you can do the classic uh, greedy algorithm and get that the correspondence coloring number is at most delta plus one. Um, it's known that if G is triangle free, then what we know is that for list coloring number, we know that it's um, one plus little of one delta over L and delta. And this, this is known by results of Molloy 17 and also by Johansson um, from 96. Molloy improved the constant to one. Johansson did it for C. And for correspondence coloring, it's known that the same bound holds. Um, and this is a result by Bernstein. Okay, um, what's also known is that if G is planar, then the bounds we have are actually uh, close to each other. So the list coloring of planar graphs is at most five. This is known by a result of Thomasson. Um, and- um, The usual chromatic number is also the same number. Hmm? For the usual chromatic number, two well, it's four, right? <laughs> At most. Oh, what do you mean? Ah, this one. This is yes. where this is where you are saying. Um, if you have triangle free, um, I think I think so. No, isn't it the shear is found that it's that the yeah. I think, so. I think that there is a there, the the constant maybe is two. Um, but the, the actual bound is the same. I think there's like a constant of a half that maybe is a um, question, but that is the same bound. Um, and for this guy, it's most five. This is proved by Tojak and um, Russell. Okay. Um, and then there's some improvements uh, in case um, um, so, um, okay, so if you have that the GERT is planar plus uh, GERT is at least five, then this is at most three, and this one does not, a chromatic number is at most three. So it's uh, again by the same people. Um, okay. Now, from lower bounds, what's known is that for um, so the lower bounds are going to be different. And this is proved by, um, for list coloring is proved by Alon, that the list coloring number. So I, at this point, I'm thinking about a G of average degree. See? And the list chromatic number is known to be omega of log D. And this is the result of Alon. And for cro correspondence uh, chromatic number, it's omega of uh, D over log D. By Bernstein. Okay, so we do see some difference between this. Um, but surprisingly, um, the question that, okay, so finally, the question we studied was, what's the uh, chromatic number of the random graph, correspondence chromatic number of the random graph? And uh, here, what's, we do know that the normal chromatic number, the usual chromatic number is n over log n, and here I'm ignoring the constants. Those are also known. Um, by Bolabash. And then for the list uh, chromatic number, it's also known 
to be um, the same order and over log n by con. Um, and then we don't know what's the correspondence following number. Is it um, n over log n? Um, and this was a question by Sergey Norin. And what we can prove is that it's n, it's at least bounded by n over squared log n. So So there's this gap. Um, we think that the right conjecture, uh, sorry, we have a, we conjecture that this should be the right bound, the n over log n. And the reason why we think that is because um, you can think about, so um, the conjecture is that um, it should be actually uh, n over log n is the right bound. Um, and, the reason for this is because it's supported by the two extreme cases. One is when you assign uh, the when you assign this matchings, as in the least coloring case, it's n over log n. You can think about the other extreme case to assign random matchings, um, like as a like the assignment is just random matchings. In that case, you also get n over log n. In fact, that, um, yeah, so uh, even if you take Kn and uh, take random assignment for each matching, random matchings for each match. Um, or lists of size. But log n exists, um, uh, you can color. So here I mean by in this uh, correspondence, I think. Uh, that's why we think that uh, the, the, because the two extreme cases are supported. Um, probably this is the right one. Okay, so let me say a few words about Hadwiger's conjecture and how it's related to this. And then I will say a few words how we actually prove this. Um, but uh, the proof is using Glova's local lemma and some probabilistic tools. Um, it's nothing too fancy. <laughs> it's like lots of data, lots of data. So after who is talk, where there are like zillions of probabilistic tools <laughs> used, this is quite simple. Um, um, okay, so let me say a few words about that. Um, I can ask a quick questions about mm -hmm. this work before you raise it. Yes. So, uh, the, the results about this one, sorry, not that, the, about that one. So the results about triangle three graphs, so they're in the spirit, they're supposed to sharpen the I like almost the MRD result yeah. about lower ones for uh, yeah, that's exactly. number. Uh, so since there's work about that for hypergraphs for high uniformity, are there hypergraph generalizations of uh, those upper bounds? Oh, uh, for this one. Um, I have I've not seen a list coloring of hypergraphs. Or what about the original chromatic number of hypergraphs? I mean, you can define a chromatic number in two ways. Like there is one way you can define what, uh, like, um, you you don't see a monochromatic uh, edge, right? When like uh, in every edge of our uniform, like at least one color pops up, but there are at least two distinct colors, so you could also define it differently. So 
depending on which version of uh, coloring you are looking at just now. Well, the second one was about the planar graph. So uh, since you mentioned how bigger conjecture, is there a generalization of uh, the bounds for the this chromatic number? And yes, so this is number for KT three minor. Exactly, that's what I'm now going to talk about. Um, uh, so, mm -hmm. so on the last board there, is that analogous to Bolobos's theorem on the chromatic number oh. of GMP or GM1? Um, no, because this one I'm just, uh, well, okay, actually you're right in the sense that the proof is similar because what that, yeah, yeah, it's very yeah. good. Yeah, so let me maybe just say one, one word about this. So how you would prove this is, so you could look at, um, you could look at any set, um, let's say S, um, I will call it any neighborhood set. Meaning that this is a set which lies in some neighborhood of a vertex. And um, what I will see here, okay, in some assignment, right? So uh, everyone has some lists, right? Um, and the property that I have, so here, th this expands to something which we call a cover graph that everyone now becomes like, um, uh, this vertex u becomes u1, u2, dot, 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 u, l, u, and so on. Um, and the property I have is that if I'm looking at like two vertices, um, well, everything is adjacent in Kn. So between any two vertices, I'm seeing um, a random, uh, random matching, right? So uh, in a way, what, what you can say, the probability of this edge being there is one over the size of the of the list, right? So this, this thing actually behaves like a random graph. So I can study this neighborhood subgraphs, which are the main object that we study because we try to um, take like some partial coloring of, uh, of the graph. And then we say, okay, actually not so many bad events happen so we can greedily uh, go up. So uh, looking at the vertex and its neighborhood and how the colors behave there is important. But indeed, so if you zoom in here, then you are lo just looking at uh, G, uh, basically GS one over L. So the same method works. Yeah, so I mean, Bolobash just proof uses, as you said, some kind of bound that either goes to Azuma or Jensen, that kind of situation. Mm -hmm. It does not use local bound. Yeah, we... Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, I think it's interesting that you are... Well, for uses. KN, no, for KN, we, we use concentration. So you're right that we use Janssen. But what I'm saying is it uses uh, Lovas local lemma when I prove this result. And also it uses concentration as well. So maybe I should have not found <laughs> this, this proof. It does use Janssen as well. So um, yeah, that's correct. Um, okay. Um, where, where was I? Uh, is that okay? And, okay. So for, uh, what's Hadriger's conjecture and what's the, what's the question that um, Cosmin asked? But this says that um, if G is KK minor three, uh, then the chromatic number of the graph G is at most K minus one. And this is true for up to K at most six, and there's tremendous, uh, really difficult work to prove that this is the case. Um, the linear Hadwiger conjecture says that, um, okay, maybe we can't really prove this K minus one, but maybe um, it's true that the chromatic number is of uh, K or, in other words, uh, HG, where this is the Hadwiger number. HG is the Hadwiger number. It means that it's the largest K such that KK is a minor of G. Okay. Um, 
what's known about this is that, um, well, there has been some improvement very recently. Um, and maybe I should put it. So we know that um, this, um, so let me call like the bounds that I'm going to prove. Let me, um, let's say that FK is the, um, let's say that FK is the maximum of uh, G, such that G is KK minor three. And what's known is, uh, from like a work of Kostochka and Thomas and from 80s, it's known that it's uh, of order k squared log k. And this is because graphs which are um, kk minor three, they are k times squared log k degenerate. That's how you get this bound. Um, and then recently in a, it was proved, um, by um, Luke Postel, Sergey Norin, and uh, Jisha Sang in 19, that um, this bound holds. Um, and then there were possibly many, many papers by Luke. And eventually, uh, this is the convergent sequence to we are stuck at uh, K log 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 k by Luc Pastel and Michel Dolcourt. Uh, I guess I think actually I say it, when, it might be already published. Uh, okay, so uh, the same conjecture if you ask for linear uh, list, uh, you can ask the same question for list coloring. Uh, it's not true in the sense that uh, you are not gonna get uh, this k minus one. Okay, so um, for the Hadwiger's conjecture is false. False for um, IFL. Um, for example, there exist K5 minor free graphs with uh, the list chromatic number five. Um, and, uh, but you can ask the same question regarding the, the bound, right? You can ask the linear, uh, whether this, the same bound FLK, uh, if I call it the list coloring bound. Um, and what's known there is um, that FLK is K log log K to the sixth. This is a result by Postel from 2020. Um, but actually there was some conjecture. I don't know what it was, um, how, why it was uh, conjectured, but there was a conjecture by Mohar and Kavarabayashi that uh, instead of this K minus one, it's three K over two, which seemed pretty random. And uh, that was disproved. So by Raphael Steiger showed that um, actually this should be at least two. And I think people believe that this two also should go up. Like it's it's maybe not tied to two. Um, like the constant, not in terms of like, not as not higher order term, just the constant. Okay, uh, so this is what's known for the least Hadwiger uh, conjecture, like in terms of uh, the bounds. Um, for correspondence coloring, nothing is known except this trivial bound here uh, because the same proof works. You just take the degeneracy and it's still true. But our results do support that. Okay, so for random graph, it's true. So I will say it in a second. So uh, F correspondence K is uh, just K squared log K by the same bounds um, by uh, Kostochka Thomason. Uh, 
and nothing goes on. Any better bounds. So in particular, uh, trying to generalize these things uh, are hard to correspond as coloring. So that's open. But what I want to say is that it's known that for Hadwig, the Hadwiger uh, number for GMP is n over uh, squared log n. This is a result by Bolobash, um, Kathleen, and Erdos from 80s. What I mean by Hadwiger number is that the largest clique uh, in GMP for p fixed is of order n over squared log n. Um, and because we are proving that the chromatic number of GNP, the correspondence number is also of this order, um, it, can, it supports the, the, the linear Hadwiger conjecture for the correspondence coloring, that the correspondence uh, coloring of graph is of the Hadwiger number of G. So it supports. Um, that chi correspondence of any G is of high bigger number of G, which is a conjecture. That, does that make sense? Oh. People think about the Kostosh platformers and found as a some kind of generalization of the fact that planar gas are six colorable with the generacy bound. Somehow that their bounds are kind of going beyond. I mean it's I wouldn't say it's generalization. Uh, I can't think about it that way, but the proof is quite extremely and different. Um, the structure of this auto. But when like you're, you have like this urge and there's like, um, yeah, I, I don't want to say it's a generalization because it's, it's not, I like conjecture, it's conjecture, it's not tight. So I wouldn't say it's generalization. Um, I think I know why you look confused. Uh, I think I missed this. So it's of order and over square plug in. No. <laughs> okay, uh, and then uh, I have uh, some time, so I will try to give you some idea what, uh, how does this proof go um, for the random graph. Okay, so um, what we prove is um, actually uh, like the key lemma is the following. Let me write it and I say what this is. Um, so we prove that for any real um, E, which is at most delta interval of one, where this is the max degree of the graph G. Um, uh, if graph G is B reach, then, um, which I haven't defined, which I will do in a second, then the co uh, correspondence coloring number is at most of delta over B. Um, and what's this B richness? It, uh, it's, um, it connects the number of independent sets of a graph. Um, so I will say what this is. So G is B a reach. Um, if um, for every neighborhood subgraph, F of G, um, so basically F is in some neighborhood of um, D. Um, let's say number of vertices is S. Um, so 
satisfies number of independent sets. Is at least uh, twice um, S choose at most B. So I'm going, uh, I'm taking the binomial coefficient up to B. Um, unless this is um, too small. Um, so the way to think about it is that I look at uh, some neighborhood subgraph. So F lies here. And I'm saying that unless F is very small, there are many independent sets in F. Okay. And uh, the way this is gonna help like why these independent sets are gonna be helpful is because when we are doing this um, um, coloring, so like I want to be, uh, when we are doing this like a partial colorings of the whole set, we are trying to uh, like, we sometimes have to do recoloring. And if I know that the graph is be rich, then um, if I remove some colors and then now look back and say, how many, uh, are there many, choices of independent sets, how I could, are there many ways to recolor? Then if there are many independent sets, then I know that there are many ways to recolor. That's the, that's the idea. Um, one thing is that, so this is the main, um, and this is the, the we use the Lovas local lemma and concentration inequalities to prove this key lemma. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's say juice triangle three. Um, and let's see what do we get. Okay, so if I'm triangle three, and okay, so there's a delta which is maybe not ideal, um, and uh, maximum degrees delta, and I want to claim that uh, g is some constant times. Uh, log delta reach. Ah, are you saying that what I wrote here is not, are, are you complaining about the, my notation of delta to the little of one? Well, I just, I wasn't, uh, some, yeah, I wasn't, yeah. yeah, yeah so I will so prove that G is C times log delta reach. Um, so let's see why that's true. So let's take any F in a, so for any vertex B, I take, uh, subgraph of the neighborhood, then it's edgeless, right? So um, the number of independent sets is um, actually two to the, the size of the vertex set. So it's two to the S because uh, F is edgeless. And now um, I can do two things like this will be at least twice S at least B if S is bigger than 2B, okay? And otherwise, if S is less than 2B, then I'll have two to the S is at most two to the 2B. And I'll say that in that case, it's less than this bound Delta to the one third, which means that if I choose B log, um, to be less than log delta one third, which means B less than uh, I think okay, so B is less than one sixth log delta. Okay. So indeed, this is true. So for triangular free graphs, it's actually trivial to show that it's B rich. Um, 
for uh, um, well. <clears throat> So for triangular free graphs, actually, you can't get better because there is the lower bound, which is delta over log delta. So I can't do better than that. And in fact, uh, maybe the motivation of this talk is maybe this B-richness is not the right notion. But so far, all the, no, all the bounds that are in the literature actually boil down to this B-richness, which we introduced, like we can we can basically recover all the possible, all results that are known already, which I'll state by B richness. But for the random graph, we can prove that the random graph is square root log n reach and it's tight and we can't do better, which means that this bound cannot be, like this approach is not gonna help us to get potentially the right uh, n over log n bound. So let me write that. Um, let me say that. So um, we can prove that GNP is uh, square root log n rich. And uh, of course, whenever I say GNP is square root log n rich, I really mean uh, uh, asymptotically almost surely. And uh, this is tight. Out to C. Um, um, and then we can recover a um, bunch of results, most results by our richness. Um, I guess if you are rich, you can recover anything. So, um, so what we can prove is that if we can prove that, for example, if you have chromatic number at most r plus one, then g is c log uh, delta reach, um, um, and then um, if if you are uh, if you are um, r plus one click free, then g is c log delta over r log log delta reach. Um, and some other results. But the point is that all of this bounds were already known and we are just recovering them. Um, okay, uh, maybe a few words how this lemma is proved. Um, So there is a there there is this um, maybe most of you have seen like this nice little lemma by Scherer uh, which says um, if um, the graph G is uh, kr free then um, like there are at least um, i g over too many independent sets uh, of size um, one over two R times log of IFG over log log IFG. Um, and uh, a similar thing is true for uh, you can, instead of having care free, now you can go to reach graphs. You can say that if, um, um, G has um, um, yeah. if G is um, as max degree delta and is be rich, um, and uh, let me just be a bit vague. Number of independent sets of G is at least uh, some, some constant times delta to the one third. Then there are many, there are at least uh, IG over too many independent sets 
of size uh, at least b. So you can get a lot of uh, independent sets of size at least b. So um, this is useful when we are doing some recoloring. Um, Now let me just say, okay, so basically the proof is this picture uh, and lots of technical stuff, but uh, pick uh, a uniform, um, pick uh, a random uniform, uh, partial coloring of um, G. And uh, now you look at this event. Um, so for every vertex U, I'm gonna look at the, so the bad events are going to be, one is uh, a U, which is gonna be the one that, um, the event that U has uh, less than Delta, some alpha many, colors available. And what I mean here by availability is that in this partial coloring, a lot of its neighbors have used uh, like colors. So what is left is that, so if I have U and I have, so imagine U is not colored at this point. Okay. So U is not in this, let's call it V, U is not in, domain of. And when I look at its neighbors, and if I see a vertex here, which is already covered, colored by say, some color, then this color is not going to be available at you. So AU is uh, the bad event that there are less than delta to some constant, many available colors to you. And the other bad event is going to be that, okay, um, and that U has uh, at least um, delta to the alpha many neighbors. Uh, let's say uh, U prime such that uh, AU prime doesn't happen. And uh, U prime is also not colored yet. So the way to think about the second event is that um, U has many, many vertices who still have to be colored, many neighbors who still have to be colored. They are in the same shoes as you. So that's also bad, right? Because uh, one thing could be if there are not so many colors available to it, but the other thing could be that his neighbors are also gonna still have to be colored and there are many of them, which can create a problem. Mm -hmm. So the picture to keep in mind is this Johansson framework where you're taking nibbles of color or, or the Molloy framework? Uh, actually the Molloy thing, yeah, yeah, indeed. So now when I'm, indeed, so now when I'm, I guess I have three minutes, I told you it will be shorter. <laughs> okay. Um, and now uh, here's uh, the idea. So if I look at the vertex and I look at its neighborhood, and then I look at the second neighborhood, the second neighborhood and then third neighborhood. And now I look at the rest. So anything that happens in the rest is only dependent, right? So if I look at any vertex here and I look at its uh, like the events AX or BX, they are only dependent on this and uh, like the second neighborhood and the first neighborhood. They are not dependent on U and then U because the event AX here talks about his neighbors, right? And uh, the BX talks about the neighbors of the neighbors. 
right? So you only get to this level. So you and, and you stays there, which means that uh, now you can, uh, the intuition is that you can color, like recolor you and, and you, the first neighborhood as many times as you want. And what we prove is that, um, I mean, this is the, the main like uh, local lemma thing is that the probability, um, sorry, that AU happens given that uh, none of the um, events uh, AX and EX happen for any uh, set of, let's say Z and Z prime, where Z and Z prime are here, is uh, at most one over some constant delta cube. And uh, the same is true for BU. And um, basically what I'm saying is that um, like we are using this lopsidedit lovas local lemma, the number, the size of the dependent uh, sets uh, is just delta cube because I just have to remove the first three neighborhoods. And now, uh, if I look at any vertex U and I want to say, what's the, what's the probability that th this vertex is gonna be bad with respect to one of the bad events, conditioned on the stuff which is outside its uh, dependency set is small. And the smallness here, like if you remember the lopsidedit local lemma, this is something like uh, one over 4D and I need at most the, uh, like events that I need to remove the size of the neighborhood. I have to stop here. So thank you, but I'll take questions. You're using a lopsided local model. Mm -hmm. Are you using this in the random injection model? Uh, what do you mean random injection model? <laughs> so what I what I mean is that I say that um, so there are some events, right? And for every i, um, so this but is all the app. I mean, I know the lo lopsided local model, but all the applications. Mm -hmm. fall random injection of the random computation model. So where the underlying randomness is not uh, is, is from some random computation. Uh-huh, I see. So is here as well. And there is well we our randomness is coming from a partial coloring of um, of the of the graph. So a partial assignment. So and you can think about you can think about it as um, I, I, I guess I can think about this as a permutation, right? Because I'm just looking at the vertex set and then assigning everyone some pair. Okay. So, okay. so, so what do you mean by partial coloring? Because I thought Molloy starts with the random coloring and then fixes those flaws repeatedly. Right, so I just, so what I mean is that uh, I'm thinking of a partial, like I, I pick up any uniformly random like partial coloring. And now I'm thinking, Okay, uh, if I can prove that this holds, right, that the probability that um, that um, the, like AU and BU is small, it means none of the bad events happen. But now, what does this mean? That I can inc uh, I can uh, finish the coloring greedily, right? Because what did I show? That uh, every vertex has at least delta to the alpha many colors available, and every vertex also has less than delta to the alpha many neighbors that needs to be covered, which means there's, I can just by greedily color everyone. So, yeah. There is no more uh, questions or sets of what's